Protectors of the Suna Suna Baba Protectors of the Suna In Allaham Dudi La Wasala Wasalam Allah Wara Rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our Hadith class. And today we are studying the Hadith from the book entitled Prophetic Parables of, uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And let me put the, um, um, oh, just again to remind everybody uh, what makes this book so spectacular is the fact that these are all Hadiths which are in the form of parables or metaphors. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would often use metaphors or parables as a means of helping uh, the companions to better understand uh, what Allah meant or what Allah was saying. And this is a great way uh, to teach people or to break things down to someone, to give them a comparison of which they can relate to. And so uh, they, this book contains all parables, uh, different parables taken from the Sitta. And let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen for today's um, uh, parable, which is a wonderful uh, hadith. And again, for those of you who have not yet purchased this book, make sure you go to www.atleeonline.com and uh, type in the book, The Parables of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me put it back up here again so you guys can see. I apologize. Sometimes I just hit the button and it'll make it. But this is the link. This is the uh, uh, address there, www dot atley online dot com this book is on his website and it's only five dollars and that's how it look it's an orange book um the prophetic parables so this book was compiled by sheikh muhammad Said atley and it's being explained by myself and today's wonderful parable has to do with the shaitan or the devil okay let's look at the hadith one of the companions tells us that a man told him that he was riding on a camel behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, and the camel stumbled. And he said, out of you know, anger, may the devil perish. And when he made this comment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do not say, May the devil perish, because if you say that, he will become so arrogant. And he will get so his head will become so big like a house and he will say only by my power. And this is something that we spoke about today in our interactive class with Dr. Asim, arrogance. Arrogance is a characteristic of Iblis. And our personal gin will push us to become arrogant. Arrogance is a sin of disbelief. This is why if you die a person who was arrogant, you die a, 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 as a Kafir. Remember, we talked about how uh, Iblis and Adam committed the same sin. But Adam owned up to his sin and repented. Iblis was too arrogant to repent. He was too arrogant to accept that he was wrong. And that's why he's cursed today. So here the prophet told him, don't ever say may the devil perish because all that does is make shaitan even more arrogant. Instead, the prophet said, you know, say in the name of Allah, because when you say in the name of Allah, shaitan hates it so much that he get, gets, and he will diminish so much that he will become the size of a fly. So don't give shaitan that type of power over you, you know. Shaitan likes to push us to say things, to curse things, you know. And what a lot of people read this hadith and they say, what's wrong with saying, may shaitan perish? Because it's an oxymoron. He already will perish on the day of judgment. Allah 
granted Iblis to the, 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 the ability to live until the day of judgment. So when you say, may Iblis die, what are you doing? You're contradicting something that Allah has decreed. And whenever we contradict something that Allah decrees, what does that do? That invalidates our shahada. And if our shahada is invalidated, that means we are now unbelievers. We have to accept Allah's wishes. Shaitan will not perish until the day of judgment. So this is why, and there's another hadith too, where the prophet speaks about never say, may Allah kill Shaitan, or may Allah destroy Shaitan. He's going to do that already, you know? So whenever we make comments like that, it makes Shaitan arrogant. He's like, oh, this idiot. Here's a person saying, may Allah kill me now when Allah already said he's given me respite until the day of judgment. So maybe that person doesn't think Allah knows what's best. So when we say words like that, you know, uh, we're, we're countering uh, the cotter of Allah and, it's, and it, it can take us out of iman, out of faith. So that's why the prophet said, don't say those type of things. Instead, say bismillah. Because when you say Bismillah, Shaitan hates to hear that. When we say in the name of Allah, you know, Shaitan hates that. And it makes him become so small to the size of a, of a fly. So uh, we learn a lot from this wonderful hadith. Number one, we learn that we should remember Allah at all times. Be more mindful of the things that we say out of our mouths. Remember, the prophet said that the, one of the number one reasons why most people will be in hell is because they could not control what came out of their mouths. So be more mindful of Allah. Remember him at all times. And when times get, get hard or difficult, you know, say bismillah, call upon Allah. Don't sit there and, and, and say things like this. And also we learn from this hadith that there is a special supplication for most everything. Our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us this. For example, when you're riding, going up a hill, he taught us to say Allahu Akbar. And when we're coming down the hill to say Supana Allah. You know, there is a supplication for most things. And finally, we learn that remembering Allah is the best way to save ourselves from all evils, you know, including going around cursing shaitan like that when he's already, it's already determined that, that he will perish and when it will happen. So this is a wonderful reminder to all of us to be more mindful of what we say out of our mouths and remember Allah, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Subhana Allah, Masha Allah. These are the type of words we see, we should use, not these other kind of words. Okay, so who would like to share uh, uh, how this hadith impacts them? Anyone who would like to start us off, take the microphone, please. Go ahead, Sister Sahara. Um, I like this hadith because um, it helps me a lot, especially like when I'm busy and I can't make it to class. I just try to do like little simple things to remember Allah, I just like praise him and give thanks to him and, you know, just be grateful that like he um, let me live another day and that like I like really appreciate it like that I'm Muslim and everything and I'm learning and my religion has like taught me a lot as a person and I'm like evolving. So I praise Allah for that because he has helped me in so many ways that like I can't even imagine. I can't say because there's like a lot of things that he has done for me, but just like saying simple words and um, just shows the um, like gratitude that I have and like how thankful I am. Alhamdulillah. Yes, we should remember a lot like that. Like you say, you know, when things happen, it's easy for us to get angry and say, oh, curse him, curse that. You know, oh, may that person die, may that die. You know, instead of saying it, say subhanAllah. Say, oh, subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar. You know, 
that'll take those evil thoughts away, those evil emotions away too. Whenever we, we remember a law, it helps to take away those evil emotions, feelings, thoughts, and all of that. Yes, go ahead, Sister Malion. Um, while I was like listening to this hadith, it made me think about like the the quote that we say a lot of like a lot of people say, um, which is like emotions cloud your judgment. And I feel like most of the time when we when we say stuff like that, we just apply it to anger, and it's not always anger. There's other negative emotions that we have, such as like grief or like depression or like loneliness, and it's like that all applies to that same hadith, like not allowing you know, our personal agenda to get to us, or like we learned in a previous class, like how does Shaitan gradually get you to do things? He doesn't just get you to like get up and just like smash a window open. It, it, it slowly creeps up on you. And sometimes you're not aware. You have to be very conscious of the choice that you make and just be aware that every choice that you make is either for you or against you. Yeah, and that's exactly. like up to you. Exactly. Our personal gen, he knows what we're going through. He knows how you're really feeling. He knows that you're sad, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're or whatever. So he's going to push you to say stuff like that. That's going to, that can uh, counter the cotter of a law, you know, knowing that by us countering the cotter of a law, it takes and validates shahada. You know, he plays us, you know, shady is very, very tricky. That's why I say shady is a lady in a mustache. Very tricky, very deceptive. Yes, go ahead, Sister Sabrine. Yes, <clears throat> we have to be so careful with what we say with our tongue. We have to stop before we open our mouth a lot of times, especially me, I do that. I think about what are the consequences of what I'm about to say, or if I feel like I might just say something without thinking, I just don't say anything at all, you know? And, and I try to remember the words, uh, that, that go easy on the tongue, like you were saying earlier, like subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, mashallah, you know, because I have I have been climbing a hill and it's been hurting me or something like that, or a stair and it'd be hurting me and doing while going up, I'm saying subhanAllah, 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 it's hurting me, but I feel like I'd rather say that than a curse word. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's what we have to be mindful of. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, Sabrine. Yes, Brother Kali. Yes. I wanted to ask, if you regret something, like, you know, you made poor choices or bad decisions in the past, and you, you say you regret it, and you wish you would have did this or something, is that going against the color? Yes, um, we don't do that. Or is it a sin? You know, is it a sin of regret? It's both. It's a. It's it's going against the card of a law. Never say if only I hadn't have done this, if only I hadn't have done that. You know, regret is not the problem. The problem is saying is when you say if only I hadn't. Have. Everything happens because it was meant to happen, and it's too late. You learn from your mistakes and move on. Islam teaches us that we're not perfect. Sometimes we make good choices. But most of the time we don't. That's why there'd be more of us in hell. You know, we're criminal by nature. We're attracted to the things that are bad for us. You know, but we don't sit around uh, uh, wallowing in that garbage. When we make a mistake, we recognize it. We ask a lot to forgive us of that mistake and we move on. But we don't go around with this, if only I had none and all that crap, because that's, that's questioning the cotter of a law. So you, you accept and man up to your mistakes and your piss poor choices in life and you keep it moving. You repent to Allah for them. You don't think about them no more and move forward. And that's part of repentance. Part of repentance entails not thinking about the sin no more. But when you guys keep going back to thinking about the piss poor choices you made, that means that you really ain't sincere in your repentance. Because if you were sincere, you wouldn't think about it no more. You already repented. You, you, re, you moved on. Regret and blame comes from shaitan, that type of regret. Regret regret that, that, that does not enable you to move on is negative and comes from shaitan. Shaitan wants you to blame yourself. Shaitan wants you to wallow in self-pity. Shaitan wants you to lose hope. So we don't, as Muslims, we don't, those are emotions we avoid. 
We say, yeah, I've made a mistake and I've repented and that's over with, done, and that's the end of it. Hallelujah, and keep it going. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Sister Latifah. Okay, this Hadith is, is a good reminder for me, you know, because sometimes we just forget that calling on Allah is the best for all things, you know, calling on him in the good and when things are bad, you know, like when our child is sick or something like that, the first thing we get to thinking about is, oh, my poor baby, how can I help him feel better? How can I help her feel better? What can I give them? Instead of remembering that, we just need to say, alhamdulillah, let me think about what I need to do. You know, we worry about how to help them feel better and still, instead of reminding them and reminding ourselves, you know, to call on the law, because all of this is the law's plans. He's in control of everything. You do your humble laws and your supana laws, get that medicine and give it to them and keep it moving. So that's, moving. this really reminds me of that. Exactly, Latif. That's exactly what this is, Hadith is all about. You know, we have to learn to remember a law in good times and in bad. You know, don't sit around playing the, 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 the blame game. You know, don't sit around with all this twisted guilt to, uh, that will destroy you, that self-destructive guilt, you know, that negativity. If something feels bad, feels wrong, makes you sad, makes you evil, then you guys should know that this is an emotion I need to let go of. You know, if it makes you feel disgusting, then it's something to let go of. That's your gin, that's shaitan. You know, just remember Allah and call upon him in good times, just like what the prophet told this man, you upset because your camel almost tripped and fell. Instead of you saying, oh, curse you. I mean, may Allah kill you, Shaitan. You should have just said, Bismillah, or SubhanAllah, or La ilaha illallah. You know, because what you said out of anger contradicts what Allah has already said, subhanAllah. And oftentimes we get mad and we use these bad, foul uh, uh, curse words, D-A-M and all that, go to H-E-L-L. -L. When you tell somebody to go to H-E-L-L, -L, you just curse that person. And if that person wasn't deserving of that curse, it's going to go up to the heavens and it's going to go to the right, go to the left. The doors of heaven will slam on it and it's going to come back on you. And if it don't come back on you, it's going to come back on your children or your grandkids or somebody you love. So we got to be careful with the things we say when things happen, you know, that are not pleasant in life. And that's what the prophet was telling us, man. I mean, life is filled with hardship and unpleasantries. But remember Allah, call upon him. Don't sit there and, and let yourself be moved to this cursing things. And there's another hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, well, it's the same hadith, really. But in another version of this hadith, and another one of the sitta, though that's when the Prophet went into detail about cursing time. Don't ever say, I hate the time, and, and cursing the weather, and cursing this, because this is what we say, you know, you know, cursing things that, that you know, only a law is in control of. How many of us get mad and say, I hate the time? I hate that time goes by too quick. I hate that it's now summer gone. I hate you. you know, I can't. We got to be careful of all that. You know, so yes, go ahead. Anyone else? Okay, so let's look at this hadith again. I'm going to put it up now so you can see one of the sisters here on is asking me, can she see it again? Yes, of course. Hold on. Let me get it up here. Oh, right here. I'm sorry. Did I do it? No. Okay. Oh, that's the lessons learned. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The hadith is that the prophet, a man was riding on a camel behind the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The camel stumbled. The camel stumbled and the man almost fell off. And he said what anybody would say out of anger. He, cur he said, may the devil perish. You know, and that's probably the same in English as saying GD. You know how people say GD? Oh, GD! When something happens, y'all know what GD stands for. 
It's the same thing in English. This in Arabic is like saying in Arabic saying may the devil perish is like GD. When you say GD, you're cursing a law. Well, here you're cursing the devil when uh, it, it make uh, cursing the devil when he's already cursed. You know, so that's when the prophet said, don't say that because all you do is make the, the, the Iblis swell up out of arrogance because he know he got you. Instead, when something happens and you like this, where you stumble and fall or something, say Bismillah in the name of Allah. Because when you say that, you know, it makes uh, the shayateen angry and also it brings calm to you. It'll cause you to calm down and get control of the situation. You know, so that's something that we need to do. Stop the GD. You know, this is a reminder for myself too, because I've said it before too. Oh, GD. No, no. And I always catch myself. Oh, Allah. I didn't mean that. Oh, my Lord, forgive me. You know, we got to be more mindful of the tongue. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session of our Hadith class. And just to let you guys know, uh, the wonderful uh, interactive discussion that we had earlier on arrogance with Dr. Asim, it's now on YouTube. I did upload the, the video to YouTube, and it's also on SoundCloud, because I know uh, that class was it's so great. Dr. Asim, alhamdulillah, I'm so happy that he's he's been with us for 25 years. And I'm just so happy that Allah has his health where it is, where he's doing better now, where he can resume his teaching and his classes. And the thing I like from that discussion today is the brother, uh, the other brother brought out a good point. He said, subhanAllah, he said, Dr. Asim, with all your PhD, because Dr. Asim has PhDs in not just Islam, but science. He, the man is a genius. Dr. Asim is a genius. Really, I am too, according to them. The, I was told I was a genius when I was 10 years old too, my IQ. Dr. Asim's IQ is super high. It's much higher than mine. Mine is, is considered right there the genius. He's way over me. The man got PhDs in Islam, you know, and PhDs in science. And he's a professor at a university. He's also a, a, a scholar of the Quran and the Arabic language. The man is a genius. And that brother was saying today, he said, subhanAllah, he said, Dr. Asim, you're such a, a role model for us because with all your education, all your expertise, you're so humble. And he is. And Dr. Asim is pretty famous. Y'all don't know it. Dr. Asim has invented, he didn't just invent this tea for diabetics and stuff. He's got other inventions out there. He's written so many books on science. Dr. Asim's pretty well off. He's a, he's a millionaire, well off guy, you know, but he's so humble. And that's what that man was saying. You're so humble, Dr. Asim. No one would ever know that you're you know, who you are and what you do because you're just as down to earth and that's how we're supposed to be. You know, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to avoid arrogance, you know, avoid, you know, allowing shaitan to, to give us the big head and puff us up into thinking that we're better than others, you know. Learn to look to those who are beneath you, not those who are above you because it'll teach you some humility. And we all need to get in the habit of eating a slice of humility pie every now and then. Okay, so that beautiful uh, class, lecture or discussion that we had earlier, it's on YouTube. And also I put on there my uh, class on the gin. Uh, so everything is uploaded. I feel like I did a big deal because you guys know I'm dealing with this knee. That's a lot for me to do. But alhamdulillah, it's all uploaded. And I want to remind everybody, don't forget tomorrow. Tomorrow, the first class for today uh, for, uh, will be at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Quran Tajweed with Dr. Asim. And this is for the intermediate and advanced speaking people. We'll be reading the Quran. So that's tomorrow at 5 p.m. We're in the, the same surah. We're still doing that same surah. <laughs> the Kaima. We've been doing it for so long. Okay, but he's not going to move us on until we all, uh, you all know, get that 
part that we're on right. So that's tomorrow at five. And then my class of follow here is at six. So make sure everybody is here. So Supana Kala Humawa Bihamdika, a shadow on my Lahaila Enta, a stock feruka wa tubu ile.